A year of war between Sudan's army and the paramilitary rapid support forces has driven more than 8.5 million people from their homes, creating the world's largest displacement crisis and uprooting families multiple times as people struggle to escape to neighboring countries with economic and security problems of their own. Financial challenges have led some to return to the war stricken capital. Here's a report. These were the first images from Sudan's capital, Khartoum, on the morning of April 15, 2023. Columns of black smoke rose as the country's armed forces and a paramilitary group clashed in a struggle for power. Both the military and the RSF claimed they had control of the airport and other key installations in Khartoum, where fighting raged overnight. Within weeks, the war had spread to other regions. Along the path, thousands of civilians were killed. The conflict also forced millions to flee in an exodus that is still active to date. Many reached neighboring countries where the situation became even worse. World leaders, the Pope and human rights agencies condemned the war even tried to bring the warring generals Abdel Fattah al-Burhan and Mohammed Hamdan the Gallo to the talks table. But those efforts failed miserably. The generals, one an army chief and the other a paramilitary commander, still don't see eye to eye. The army chief even started a sort of shuttle diplomacy. He headed to the United Nations headquarters to convince the world that his foe was the hindrance to peace. After New York, Al-Burhan tried to garner support from several African nations to eradicate the rapid support forces or to at least stop the war. As we mark one year of vicious conflict, a grim milestone by any standard, I urge the Sudan Armed Forces and Rapid Support Forces to protect civilians and guarantee unimpeded humanitarian access. I'm disturbed by continuing reports of attacks on civilians, including what appears to be on an ethnic basis in Darfur, and vital civilian infrastructure such as hospitals. The UN is particularly worried about conditions in Darfur. A year of war has driven over 8.5 million people from their homes. Waves of ethnically driven violence were unleashed in the western region of Darfur before they spread to other areas including Gezira State, an important farming region that became an aid hub where many sought refuge. We are not looking at the economic situation now. We are more concerned with the safety aspect. My children now, one of them is Saleh. He still sleeps with me until now because the sounds of bangs and explosions scare him. He still wakes up scared at night unless he sleeps next to me. The United Nations has called for more humanitarian assistance for those displaced people fleeing Sudan. Despite the magnitude of the crisis, UNHRC says funding is critically low and threatens aid deliveries. And that's where Germany comes in. The European nation will provide a further 244 million euros or 260 million dollars in humanitarian aid to Sudan. This announcement was made at a conference organized by France where several foreign ministers and diplomats marked the first anniversary of the devastating conflict. They need food, nutrition, clean drinking water, baby food, medicines, clothing, schools, emergency accommodation and actually above all psychological treatment. Germany will therefore today make a further 244 million euro in humanitarian aid available to provide these people with what is needed for survival. Thousands of civilians have been killed, although the death toll estimates are highly uncertain and both sides are accused of committing war crimes. Despite not having a definitive day or timeline of when the hostilities may end, another threat is looming, famine. Bureau Report, Rion, World is One. For all the latest news, download the Wii on app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.